realized as I was thinking about this video I, that some of you may not even know how to set up the iDRAC, uh, the basic level of iDRAC. So what we're going to do is I have to restart this server anyway. I've already set up the virtual console so we can kind of give a example, a real life example of how this might be useful is from my bedroom, I don't have to walk all the way downstairs to uh, sit at the server. I can show you guys how to set up the iDRAC or adjust the iDRAC settings while sitting, you know, 200 yards from the server. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we'll log in. All right. So what we need to do is to, to access or to adjust the iDRAC or set up the iDRAC rather, we need to be, um, or we need to reboot it and we need to boot into, um, or we need to access it from boot. So we'll go ahead and restart. Okay. So as you can see, it's you know, as if we were sitting there and the server was shutting down in front of us. Okay, so now the server is starting up and we can actually see it as if we were sitting physically in front of the server. So it's going to configure memory. Um, and then it's going to give us the option to pick whether we want to go to uh, the boot menu or um, the setup menu or configure our drives or, you know, w w all the different options. Uh, so here in a second it will show us that and then we'll move to the next part. All right, at this point, what we're going to do uh, is we're going to select um, FN and F2. There we go. Uh, and we're going to enter system setup. This will allow us to um, you know, access iDRAC, but you could do either you know, any of these options, go F10, F11 if you want to change boot settings, whatever the case is. So we'll go ahead and we're going to go ahead and hit escape so we don't really care about verifying the memory. So there we go. Let's just make this a little bit faster. All right, guys. So we're in system setup. And as you can see, we have access to iDRAC. So you know, maybe it's a little bit bigger as well. So we're going to go ahead and select iDRAC settings. Um, what we want to do is, you know, there's obviously a lot you can configure and a lot you can do with iDRAC, but for now, what we want to do, what we really care about is we just want to make it accessible. So we're going to go to network and, um, it just, it depends on how things are set up or what the defaults are, but what you need to have is you need to have your, uh, NIC enabled. Um, you also need to, so unless you want have a dedicated, um, NIC for iDRAC, which I don't, you can just select whichever one it's plugged into. So in my case it's plugged into, uh, or sorry, whatever the ethernet cable, uh, is plugged into your server, whatever particular port that is, just select it here. So if it's one, two, three, four, whatever, uh, minus one, I don't have a failover. If you have one, you can specify it. This tells you uh, the MAC address of your iDRAC. Um, let's see, auto dedicated NIC. We don't have that, so that's disabled. Um, okay, so register DRAC on DNS. Yes, we do want that. We are going to have it auto configure our domain name, um, and it's probably going to be this, if I remember correctly. So, yeah, there we go. Um, so I don't know if this was default or not, but basically it's just iDRAC dash the service tag associated with the server. I find that's pretty uh, self-explanatory or pretty useful. Um, and then finally, uh, we're enabling uh, IPv4 and DHCP. So I'm actually going to assign this a uh, IP address reservation on my router. So basically every time that this boots, it'll be assigned the same IP address. Um, but you can uh, statically assign it one as well, if you'd like, um, just depends on, you know, what your preference is. Mine is just to assign it, um, on the router side, just a little bit cleaner that way, I think. Um, okay. Let's see. Do we want to use DHCP to obtain server address? Yes, we do. Let's see. Do we want to use uh, IPv6? I do not personally, so I'm disabling that. 
let's see what other things we kind of set here. Um, all right, only thing left is do we want to, um, I'm not even sure what that is, so I disabled it. Channel privilege limit or level limit administrator, uh, that was default. And then if you have an encryption key, you're welcome to put that here. I did not fool with any of this. This is just from my home lab. So, um, you know, if you want that, you can add that uh, for whatever your use case is. And then finally, um, I don't have any VLAN set up, so I'm also going to disable uh, VLAN ID here. So, but all right, guys, that's pretty much it. Um, after this, once you uh, go back um, and then hit finish, uh, and then finish again. Are you sure you want to exit? Yep. Um, that should save all of your configurations or all of your settings that you just chose. And then naturally, uh, you once your server boots, you should be able to access the iDRAC on whatever IP address you assigned it. So in my case, I'm accessing it on... Uh, 192.168.168.80 because that's what I assigned um, on my router side or on the router side as far as uh, an address reservation for this particular um, iDRAC. So, and again, I, I, I can't really show you that easily and it's not really going to make a whole lot of difference for you guys because you 99% of time or 99% chance you don't have the same router as me. And you're gonna have to figure out how to how to set that on, on your end anyway so my best advice there is to just google uh, your particular router uh, and see if a it has address reservation capabilities and then b how to actually go about setting those so all right you guys one last thing that might be useful um, is how to add and remove users so for example um, def by default you're gonna have anonymous which I forget if it's enabled or disabled, but disable, or I would recommend disabling it. Um, you're going to have root, uh, and then you're going to have this um, FWUPD um, user as well. So don't really know exactly what this is for. I haven't found any use for it, but normally what I do is I overwrite this with an actual user. Uh, as you can see, I just created a second one here as my um, less permission read only user. So basically I, I always operate with a root which has full access and then a, a read only just to check things. Um, so anyway, just to go through the motions, like if we were actually gonna create a new user, we could go ahead and, and click on this or any of the others and say, okay, we're going to configure a user. Um, and you can get fancier, you can have SSH keys and, and all these things for users. But for us, we're just gonna stick with passwords because all of this is in my internal local network, which uh, you know isn't really accessible from the external internet. So this isn't really a major concern for me. Um, so what you could do is if you want to enable this user, you can click here. You can change the name, so we can make this as test or you know whatever you want it to be. Um, then you change the password, and you can select whatever password it is that you would want. So blah 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 blah. Um, you know, and change it to that. Um, and then you can kind of go through the motions here. So maximum LAN user permissions, none, none. This isn't really important unless you're trying to give um, higher than read only permissions. Um, and then here you can assign different things that they have access to. So um, for example, if you want read only, they only have access to log in. You know, if you want to be administrator, they have access to everything. And then you could have operator, which has different levels of access, which you can, you know, check things on and off. So anyway, guys, that is how you would add a new user and then you hit apply and then that would generate you a new user. So um, just wanted to make sure I, ta I touched on that because I, I felt like that's something that could be useful and, and maybe some people wouldn't know about. So um, just wanted to touch on that as well. So all right, guys, that's it. Um, I know this is enterprise, but this is basically the bare minimum that you need to be able to uh, access your iDRAC and you can do a lot of cool stuff like for example if you only have enterprise or if you only have uh, express you will not be able to um, view the virtual console which I think is super sweet that's actually what we were just looking at here 
um, and allows you to interact with your server when you're not actually physically there as if you were. Um, but you can still do a lot of cool stuff like you can check your uh, physical disk to see if any of them have failed. You can look at your virtual disk, see if there's any issues. Um, you can look at, uh, let's see here. Well, this isn't going to apply to you guys because this isn't, isn't going to be a feature that's available, but you can look at your network. Um, and you can make changes to this as well. So there's a lot of really, really great stuff you can do even without uh, having enterprise level access. But I think the virtual console is definitely worth it. Um, you, know, you can also use to see logs. You can use it to check your power consumption and um, you know, if there's any heat issues related to your server. So, you know, very, very useful stuff. Highly recommend, you know, at least having the uh, express level of iDRAC set up. But all right, guys, that's it for this video. Um, hope this was useful for you. Uh, I'm going to make another one on um, the enterprise level and setting up the virtual console. That's kind of a pain, but um, it's another super useful tool for um, you know managing your home lab. So if you like this one and you're interested in you know the virtual console and the enterprise level access, please check that out, and I'll link that in the video description below. Um, anyway, guys, thanks again for watching and have a great rest of the day. All right, guys, brief reminder here. If you enjoyed the content, please consider giving me a like and a subscribe so I can continue to grow and produce better and better content for you. If you really enjoyed the content, you might even consider buying me a coffee. And the link for how to do that will be in the video description below. Um, if nothing else, please just give me some feedback and the comments and let me know how I'm doing. Uh, if anything's unclear or if there are anything uh, that I can improve on. Thank you again, guys, and have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.